good morning and welcome to this Sunday service on the 17th of May, the sixth Sunday of Easter. You're more than welcome. The order of the service is available on the website, but all the words for the responses and the hymns will be shown on the screen as well. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we light our Easter candle. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you. The cross has not defeated you. The grave has not kept you silent. At first dew of the morning, you met our sister Mary and called her by her name. Meet us as you met Mary with gentleness and resolution. Speak our names quietly in our hearts that we may proclaim your name boldly on our lips. Amen. And our first tip, like a mighty river flowing, the words will be on the screen. pray together. Faithful God, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to our prayers of penitence. Jesus Christ, risen, Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrections. In your mercy forgive us, Lord, Lord hear, hear us, us and, and help us. us. We, we have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithful faithless and not believing in your mercy forgive us lord hear us, us and help us we have lived for this would alone and doubted our home in heaven in your mercy forgive us lord, lord hear, hear us, us and, and help, help us. us may the god of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in christ our lord Amen. Our first reading today will be taken from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. 
Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out and find him. Though he's not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooks at ignorance, but now he commands all his people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second hymn is A New Commandment, and words will be on the screen. Thank you. 
And now we have come to our second reading, which is taken from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor, to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long the world will not cease. see me any more. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And we'll now go over to Sue, who will deliver our sermon. Thank you, Charles. Well, in the reading we've just heard, Jesus speaks reassuringly to his disciples in words that speak very well into our own situation too. They are words of promise, reassurance and future hope. Given to his disciples in the last few days before he was crucified, a time that you might call transition, a time in between his earthly ministry and all that the disciples had become familiar with, and the new and unknown future that they were about to enter. How do you feel about transitions in life? Many of us find transition difficult. And for all of us, we're on the verge of one now. We will be emerging from lockdown in the next few weeks with some trepidation for some of us because we're still at risk. Our age or health make us vulnerable and the virus still hasn't gone away yet. One thing is for sure, our life post lockdown will be very different from how it was before all this started. The experiences of the last few weeks have made many of us value and reprioritize our relationships and indeed look again at our whole way of life. And Jesus too knows that relationships are really important at this time of transition. And so he reassures his disciples of his love for them, his commitment to them and his provision for them. He describes beautifully the close and intertwined relationship between himself, his heavenly father and the spirit. He promises the gift of his spirit for when he is gone the spirit of truth and says you already know him for he lives with you and will be in you he speaks of what they have already experienced to give them confidence and he reassuringly says there will be more of this even though new challenges are up ahead and it will be difficult you've tasted what's good you know what the spirit is like the spirit will come and be with you so don't be afraid Today's Gospel reading is, and the earlier part of uh, John 14 that Phil spoke about last week, is about building a sense of trust. Jesus is saying, I won't abandon you. I will give you all that you need. I will send the Spirit to come and be with you, to remind you of my teaching, to help you continue my work. And he uses this lovely phrase, I will come to you. I will abide with you, which means I will share my life with you, walk alongside you by my spirit. I'll be there for you. So this is the promise. Jesus will send the spirit. Did you notice he said, I will send you another counsellor? Some translations use the word comforter, helper or advocate, but he says another as well as himself. A counsellor speaks into our lives, helps us to interpret what's been going on, to understand, to hold on to what's good and what's important, 
and to help us let go of the damaging stuff. And just in the same way, this is what the Spirit will do for his disciples. And the Spirit will offer to do that for us today too. Today's reading begins and ends with love. Jesus begins, if you love me, you will obey my commands, which means all his teaching and especially that one, love one another. Do you remember when Jesus said, love each other so that people will know you are my disciples? And it finishes, if you obey my commands, you are showing how much you love me and you will be loved by my father too. Lots of people say that being a Christian is all about love, being a loving person, loving your neighbour. Well, it is, and there's a lot of loving and sacrificial giving going on at the moment. People caring for their fellow human beings by putting themselves at risk on the front line or in the NHS, tirelessly working to collect food for those in need. And uh, you might know some in our local community who are doing that. But being a Christian is also, is much more than about love. It's about doing what Jesus says and following him, following his example and actually getting to know Jesus in our hearts. And that's what he means when he says, if any loves, anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching, my father will love him and we will come and make our home with him. It's a living relationship. There's a great hunger for God at the moment. Tear Fund has recently commissioned some research which has shown that one in four young people, that's people aged between 18 and 34, one in four young people have started praying. And many more than that have been tuning in to online worship services like this one. People have been downloading Bible apps. Uh, bookshops have been selling out of Bibles. Uh, people have been listening to the UK Blessings song that we heard last week. I think over 2.1 million people have heard that song now. People are praying, hearing the gospel and going to church in ways that would have been unimaginable a few weeks ago. Perhaps that's because the coronavirus has shaken the very foundations of our society, of our being. Perhaps it's made us all think again about where we're going in life and has caused us to ask deep questions. It seems to me that the Spirit of God is on the move in all of this. Do you remember in our first reading, St Paul was given boldness to speak about Jesus Christ to people who had lost their spiritual focus. He was speaking in a city where they had lots of gods, lots of temples, they worshipped everything, and they even had an altar to an unknown God just in case there was one. And uh, in many ways, our society today has lost its spiritual focus, just like those people. And now, as a result of coronavirus, we've all been challenged to think again, what is our spiritual focus? And I believe that the church has been awakened and given boldness to speak to people about faith in Jesus Christ in online worship, in new ways, in being a little bit bolder, in, uh, in putting things online, as well as reaching out in practical ways. I spoke about transition earlier. Jesus was preparing his disciples to continue his work on earth after he'd gone. And in the church's year, we are now at a time of transition between Easter and Pentecost. Pentecost when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, who of course is still living and working amongst us all today. In John chapter 14, Jesus explained the really close relationship between himself, his Father and the Holy Spirit, explaining that if we want to know God, if we want to know what he is like, all we have to do is to look at him, look at Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And at this time of searching for meaning, searching for God in the midst of these new and uncertain times, this is what we need to do. Look towards Jesus and invite him into our lives. This coming Thursday, we remember Ascension Day, 
the time when the risen Jesus returned to his Father in heaven, having told his disciples to wait a few days for the coming of the Spirit, and that happened ten days later at Pentecost. In this season between Ascension and Pentecost, we've been asked by the National Church to pray, to pray for our nation every day, to pray for people to come to know Jesus, and to pray for a revival in, in our world. So do look at the Thy Kingdom Come website, take a look at the prayer resources, have a look at the prayer journal and the prayer app, and pray. And if any of you watching this service online would like to talk to me about Christian faith, please feel free to get in touch. Do contact me. You'll find my contact details on the website. The big picture is that God is the maker of all things. He's the maker of our world. He's the creator of the world. And we can trust him to come into our lives and to be with us, just as Jesus promised his disciples. That promise is true for us today. Our next song is a song of praise to God. So even if you're just dipping your toe into the water of Christian faith, or, or if you've been following God for many years, I invite you to join in with this song of praise, which will help you to see Jesus in our midst. Amen.
now we come to our affirmation of faith. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we say together, Christ died for our sins. In accordance with the scriptures, he was buried. He was raised to new life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and he appeared to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. And now we come to our time of intercessions. Let us pray. Lord God, as we come together as Christians, we are truly grateful for your never-ending love and wisdom, and we would pray that you would hear our prayers. We are all caught up in this terrible pandemic. Some of us suffering from the virus, having caught it. Some of us are suffering as loved ones are ill from the effects of the virus. And all of us are feeling the strain of the impact, having to remain at home, unable to see loved ones or go out and live our lives as we once were. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to see a way through this terrible situation, to give us strength to remain strong, not only for ourselves, but for others who may be vulnerable or suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that as we know Jesus, that he may be known to others who are in desperate need, that he would bring them peace and healing at this time. Jesus, we pray that you would not only hold the hands of Christians across the world, but also that you would reach out to all the peoples of the world, offering them your loving embrace, when at this time they cannot share the embrace of those closest to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we see green shoots of hope poking through as we see countries and governments starting to ease the lockdown, allowing more freedom for us to go out and enjoy the glorious weather. But Jesus, just as governments are urging caution, we would ask that you would help us now to stay safe for one another and those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Farsley and our surrounding communities and all the communities around the world. We pray for those people that continue to support the most vulnerable, making sure they are safe and they know your love and care. We pray that you would walk with them as they go out to serve others, knowing that you hold their hands in everything they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turning to ourselves, we pray that as we walk with you, Jesus, you continue to hold our hands during these difficult times, that we might know and feel your love for us, keeping us safe and strong. Keep us in faith for you, Jesus, that as we look out through our windows, give us wisdom and patience so that one day we will be able to go out and share a loving embrace of others, just as you continue to hold us in your loving embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we say together, as our Saviour taught us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the collect for the sixth Sunday of Easter is said. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our collect for the growth. God a mission who alone brings growth to your church. Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to 
to our witnesses. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On our fourth hymn, may the grace resound worship. Pray for our children's groups, our families, and the ABT Church. We give thanks for the offerings we have made this week. In person, in our practical care for others, and in our financial giving for the work of the church. And we ask God to bless it all. Our costs continue even though the church building is closed. Our church relies on donations to enable us to continue offerings, spiritual support and practical help to those in need in our community. Our income has gone down during the coronavirus crisis because we have had to close the church buildings, but our work to help people continue. If you'd like to give us a donation online, you can do so at stjohnsfarsley.org.uk forward slash donate. Thank you. And now the blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to us who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give us joy as we share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, 
empower us and fill us with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.